Welcome to the ATAG channel. As our subscribers know, we're always presenting exciting videos about the world of new technologies. Today, again, we'll be dealing with an exciting subject, the space race, and the rivalry it generates between two great powers, the United States and China. The Middle Kingdom is on the way to achieve the incredible, to take over the US yet leader in this field. What are the space projects of these two giants? And can China really consider becoming the world's first power in space? Let's start. The United States has once again launched a race to the moon with the Artemis program, which starts today with the Artemis I program. But against whom are they leading this race? When they developed the Apollo program, it was against the USSR. Today it's against China. The US intends to remain the leader of the space conquest sector. However, the Chinese government denies being in the race against anyone. The CNSA, the Chinese Space Agency, and NASA are both aiming at the South Pole of the Moon for future manned missions. Moreover, several proposed landing sites are common to both states, which may further inflame already existing tensions. Following the publication of the last white paper on the space strategy for the period 2021 to 2025, China, that nothing stops anymore, has unveiled new objects during a press conference held in June 12, 2021. China has proven itself. Its last advances in robotic exploration of the moon and Mars and in manned space flights have finally conceived the most critical and incredible space power of the Middle Kingdom. It is fair to say that it is now on par with the European Space Agency and NASA in many fields. Curiously, while relations with the United States have never been so tense and are beginning to become more complicated with Europe, China wishes to legitimize its influence abroad. It also wants to strengthen its existing partnership with the European Space Agency, ESA, and the Russian Agency. This does not exclude alliances with other nations in the future. These objectives have been recently reinforced by the signature of a partnership with the Russians to settle permanently on the moon. After the Change E6 and 7 missions, Change E8 has been added, with experiments with 3D printing. This mission aims to build harder infrastructure and develop ISRU units to exploit and use lunar resources, with a view of a man-based plan for the decade of 2030. In the field of robotic exploration, the Chinese Space Agency has added new destinations to its planned objectives. Thus, by 2030, a mission could be developed to Jupiter. It would carry a rover or lander to land on the surface of one of the four Galilean moons of Jupiter, Caliceto. They're also considering a mission to return samples from the asteroid, which is about 10 meters in diameter. Listed as a quasi-satellite of the Earth, the objective is to collect samples from the surface and it th should then join the comet 311P in the main belt. This launch is planned for the period 2024 to 2026. Encouraged by the incredible technologies successful of its first Mars mission, a real no-fail, China has scheduled a mission to return Martian samples. The objective is to bring them back before the MSR mission of NASA and ESA, planned at best for the beginning of the 2030s. To conquer space, the range of existing launchers will be expanded, with the addition of particularly reusable launcher and a new heavy-duty launcher. On this subject, China is a rather discreet, just like on its space drone project. Concerning the space station, China has completed its construction of November 03, 2022. It is a real achievement. With the addition of its last module, the structure of the station is now finished and functional. To complete its commissioning, the CNSA will still have to send two other missions. The first one, called Tanzhou 5, started at the beginning of November 2022. Its purpose is to bring food and equipment to prepare the second mission, named Tanzhou 15. The latter is a very important step for the CNSA. It'll take on board Tycho Nance, who will replace the current crew of the station. The first handover will officially mark the beginning of the operations on board. The station is expected to operate for about 10 years, during which this time will be continuously upgraded. In total, Tengon is expected to host up to three new models. The most ambitious, the Shantine, a first-class telescope that'll join it within two years. In the areas of Earth observation, satellite positioning, and space communications, China will consolidate its capabilities to ensure the autonomy and to reduce the dependence on foreign data. They also want to build a constellation of about 13,000 satellites to provide internet access. China has also announced to develop its policy of investment in infrastructure, research, and development in the space field in order to stimulate innovation and thus support the economic and social development of the country. The main aspect of rivalry with the United States concerns the militarization of space. 
Until now, the Americans have been in dispute leaders of this field. U.S. foreign intelligence sees this aspect of China's space program as one of the major security concerns for their country. China, unlike the United States, does not separate its military activities from its civilization commercial activities, and it does not speak out on this subject. To understand the fears of the United States, one must be aware that if a country is able to develop a satellite capable of conducting rendezvous and proximity operations for debris removal or refueling, this same technology capability could be used to attack a satellite, degrade its orbit, or simply get close enough to take a look. The militarization of space is becoming more and more palpable. The Space Treaty provides a ban of weapons in mass destruction in Earth orbit. However, it does not completely prohibit the use of weapons such as lasers, anti-satellite missiles, etc. Perceived as an offensive power, China reportedly produces technologies capable of challenging US space assets. On January 11, 2017, China destroyed one of its own Fengyang 1C weather satellites with the Dongfeng 21 missile. This appears to vindicate US concerns about the space threat posed by China. This demonstrates of America vulnerability should not make us forget that China remains far behind the United States. The balance of power between Washington and Beijing is still largely in favor of the Americans. And that's not all. China is developing various low orbit satellite constellation projects. The objective, as for Jeff Bezos with Blue Origin or Elon Musk with Starlink, is to extend the world's internet coverage. It seems obvious that space conquest is part of the dream of the great rebirth of the Chinese nation. Dear to the leader Xi Jinping, China has every intention of being the world's greatest technological power by 2049 or even earlier. But then, could an agreement between the United States be possible? The impact of China's space program and the US space station exploration goals is still uncertain. Despite this, many experts believe that it's time for the United States to seek common ground. As present, such collaborations seem impossible, especially under the Wolf Amendment which prohibits NASA from using federal funds to engage in bilateral cooperation with Chinese government. But should these rules be relaxed? John Logsdon and Elliot School of International Affairs of George Washington University say it's more than necessary. As he explains, the US should start to rely on diplomatic and scientific channels of potential collaboration in space. Such an agreement between two enemy countries would not be the first time in history. Indeed, the enormous threat posed by the nuclear arsenal of the United States and Russia has pushed the two nations into deadlock. This permanent tension has pushed them down for cooperation rather than competition. The ISS, which then built jointly, was permanently occupied for more than 20 years by astronauts and cosmonauts. This is a concrete example of what could happen with China. If you enjoyed our topic of the day, feel free to like this video. To enjoy more videos like this, subscribe to the channel, and most importantly, leave us suggestions for our next topics. Don't forget to activate the notification bell to be among the first to see our next video, and we'll see you soon on ATEC.